Ghost Zone by Marty Ross. Four hours ago, all radar systems in this hemisphere went haywire. When everything came back online, something very big was plunging through our atmosphere. It impacted about a mile outside this village, Inch Bray. The people there, you think they're alive? I think we should go in there and find out. Dr. Granger has volunteered already. And where do I come into this? We need a mountain guide. Drop the gun. This village is looking after itself. Dan, what's this all about? Invasion. Now move. Okay, folks, calm down. Okay. We got them. Who are they? You've nothing to worry about. We're from the military base at Talakart. We came to help. Well, help us by shutting up. Oh, 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 oh. You don't understand. You don't understand what this village has been through. Now, we're not huddled in this hall for a jumble sale. We're here because Inch Bray is under attack. From what? You. Well, you are Jill, aren't you? Of course I am. I hope so. Where's Heather? Heather's fine. Where is she? I'll take care of the other two if you want to have a wee family reunion. You see, McBain, thank God. Listen, Beth and the captain here, they came to help. Then I'm sure they'll help now by coming with me across the road to the station. Move. You don't have to be quite so charming about it. You come too, Jamie. I'm feeling they'll behave better if I've got a man with a gun at my side. Happy to help, Constable. Well, look, if you'll just let me explain. Oh, no. well, it's OK, folks. It's all going to be sorted out. Just stay here. You'll know more than we do. Jill, you come with me. Okay, through here. Apologies for the decor. Some what's it from outer space trying to give us a makeup. And now listen, PC McPlot. Just stand back there. Against the wall. Actually, I'm impressed. This whole village should be radioactive dust. Yet all I see is a few broken windows and a little fallen plaster. Whoever did the building work around here should apply for a contract at Fort Knox. Uh, Fort Knox? <laughs> yeah. You know... This is where you came from. Huh? The military base. Tell a cart, you bloody thick tutor. We came to help you. Then help us now. Hand those space helmets of yours to Jamie here. They're for uh. protection against radiation. You know, that stuff that stops so miraculously at the edge of your village. Radiation, so you say. Or maybe something from another planet needed helmets to adjust to our atmosphere. You certainly have a gift for science fiction around these parts. Yeah, is it something in the drinking water or too much Arthur C. Clarke in the public library? Uh, here's a little hard fact for you. Jamie, dismantle those helmets. Oh, oh, let my screwdriver at home. Will a rifle butt do? Oh. All right, that's enough! Get back against that wall! Jamie! Oh. Just you get back there! What kind of craziness has got into you people? What kind of craziness landed out there and came looking for us? That's what we're dealing with. Right, those packs on your backs. Take them off. Look, you plainly got the wrong end of the stick here. Take them off. Jamie. OK, you're going to hand them over, aren't you? You can have mine, certainly, on one condition. Oh, yes? That you take it from my naked hand. Yes. Here, just let me get this glove off. OK. Now, the pack. Here. Take it. Just watch her. Oh, you do have a magical touch, Constable. I'm all of a tingle. Let go of my hand, please. Oh, what a shame. There is a certain electricity between us, don't you think? That's enough of that. What's that all about? I'll tell you when I know. They're here to help. If 
if that's what they are, then fine. But we have to be prepared in case they turn out to be something else. What has happened here? Something came down out the sky last night. It, it smacked down over there. Twenty miles away, my windows got blown out. How come this place wasn't a white flat? It almost looks normal. I barely know any more than you, sweetheart. But I'd, I guess I'd say whatever landed here had other things in mind for us. They said it was a meteor. And since when did meteors carry passengers? Passengers? A few of us went to check out the edge of the dust cloud. Figures came out of it, attacked us. They must have come with whatever landed out there. But they looked human. They looked like your friends. What's this in your pack? A radio? What do you think? It's who or what you were planning on contacting I don't like thinking about. Jamie, send a message. E.T. phone home. Oh, for God's sake! Now, your pack. Oh, you don't want to go blasting at what's in my pack. Jamie, I'm going to take that pack from him. If he resists, shoot his foot off. Who do you think you are, the bloody mafia? I represent a community protecting itself against invaders. You do it very well. What? Not protecting the community, blah, blah, blah. I mean, being a constable, looking and sounding just like one. Hand over that pack. Let's face it. Logically, not only should Inchbray not be here, but everyone in it should be, I hate to say it, dead, or as near dead as makes no difference. Yet, there you stand. Neither of you looking like he suffered so much as a bang to the funny bone. And logically, that can hardly be. So, what are you doing here? And who exactly are you? Your pack, Captain. Careful. No. Let's see. What is this? An explosive device. I primed it as you were taking the pack off me. We have about three minutes and 30 seconds to live. Captain. Diffuse it. Well, maybe I never read that far in the manual. You can diffuse it. I know you can. Perhaps you're right. But I can't defuse it stuck against this wall with a bomb over there. Over to the table. Now, Jamie, keep that gun on him. You just tell this farm boy not to get too twitchy. You don't want me getting sweaty fingers whilst I'm doing this. The bomb, switch it off. OK. I just have to... Have that rifle in my face, please. Turn it off, big man. Maybe then I'll take this barrel out of your ear. Well, that's a deal, is it? Certainly, it's a deal. Switch it off. Just a tick. Look, I have one last adjustment to make, and that rifle is making me nervous. Jamie, take the gun out of the gentleman's way. Mm. He's playing a game with us. We can play games too, can't we? So long as we know what game it is, lower the gun. Thank you, Jamie. Now, I just have to do this little thing here. All right, Jamie, be a good boy. Row in your front and stay put. A crude game, this. Crude enough. Hands on your head, constable. Beth, get the keys off him. Here they are. You lock up, and I'll take care of the ball. I was hoping you'd say that. Here we are. Home sweet home. It looks... perfect. I always reckoned it lost a little something when you moved out. No, I mean... there's no damage at all, is there? And the flowers... It's like summer. High summer. You do like summer, don't you? But it's not summer. It's February, in a radiation zone. Dan, what is going on? You're coming home. What else matters? Where's Heather? Just follow the sound of grim rock music. Remember when that stuff used to have a tune? She's in her room. Happy to see her mum, I'm sure. She's OK. Why don't you go up and find out? Yeah. Heather? Heather! Now then. Oh, please tell me that's just some fake countdown. Fake? Definitely didn't read that far in the manual. You do know how to switch it off. Oh, yes. Oh. On, off, 
It's a simple code. Oh, hold on, that's wrong. David! There. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. <sighs> Other than what we do now. With those helmets smashed, we've lost the option of a tactical retreat through the dust cloud. Well, we just need to lie low until mm. our backup arrives. Or until these people see sense. Are they people? What? Let me take a look outside. Oh, damn it! Get down! Oh. Ah, oh, Mary Town's folk of inch bread. Yeah, quite a few of them. And they're coming this way. They must know we got out. How? Oh, didn't search our policeman friend for a mobile. You think it's as simple as that? Well, let's postpone worrying about it until we find the back way out. Um, wait! What now? Came from somewhere along there. That corridor. All right! We hear you! We have a gun! Well, there you go. Fight them off. Enough's enough. Hmm? Come on. Do you hear? You see anything? Yes. What about this room? Stink. What's your feet? My feet? There, on the floor. What is it? Blood, I think. What? Uh, take your glove off. And come and feel. It's blood. I'll uh, take your word for it. No, honestly, you'll find it interesting. Shh, shh. Can you hear that? Hear what? Breathing. Behind those tumbled over bookcases. Oh. All right. Come out of there. Careful. Oh, I'll be careful. Come out. No, I meant... Oh! What in the name of... No, don't shoot. What the hell is it? Oh. It's a man. <gasps> Severe burns, head to foot. A lot of broken bones. Oh, this is what I expected to see here. Don't kill me. Don't kill you. We're here to help you. Help me. Who are you? This fabric burnt to his skin. It, it's a uniform. A, a police Bain. uniform. McBain? That's the name of the... Whoa. That's my name now. Or one of them anyway. McBain? How did you get out? Must have had another key. I am the key. And the lock? Eh? No. No, indeed. You slipped through the net, my friend. But as you see, I am now more of a Constable McBean than you are. So what more need is there of you? Oops. Watch out! What the hell was that? Bolt of electricity! Came straight up to the floor! And straight through him! He's dead. The same charge can be sent through that rifle just as easily. <laughs> but it wouldn't be good enough just killing you that way. Not just yet. I want more from you than your death. Such as what? Let's not write a bloody scientific paper on it. Come on! Yes, go. Wherever you run an inch, Bray, you'll find me there too. Sweetheart, turn the music down a wee bit. Yeah, yeah. Just because it's not got a guitar solo by Eric Boring Clap. Ah, oh, that's better. Right, now I'll leave you two to all the girly huggy stuff, huh? I'll be downstairs. I'll start getting things ready. Getting what ready? Relax. We're your family. You're safe here. Yeah. You. You are my mum, aren't you? Of course I am. Yeah. My mum, I came with friends to help you. So I heard... I was so worried. Yeah? 
Same here. Like the space suit. What? Oh, yeah, this. Yeah, we had to get through the cloud. Look, my very own space helmet. Very cool. Except maybe not on you. It was supposed to be a rescue mission. Your dad and the others overreacted a little. I was so scared, Mum. Last night. The light, the fire. You weren't here. I'm here now. Oh, will you... Will you put down that stupid helmet and hold me? Hold you? Oh, sweetheart. Whoa! Mum. Oh, a shiver, a, a tingle right through me. Oh, Heather, I thought you were... What? You're not. And that's that. Oh, just to feel you so close. You're alive and safe, and that's all that matters. We're none of us safe, Mum. Those people you came with. I told you. They're, they're friends. Something came down with that light. Dad says friends are what they make themselves look like until they attack. This is weird. I thought they'd have headed us off by now. Yeah. It's not like they haven't seen us. That kid back there at the corner, the old woman behind that window, they, they see us and just stare. Like a lot of bloody waxworks. Yes, they are a little like that, aren't they? And that business back there with the two McBains, how can there be two of them? There can't, obviously. Just as there can't be a village like this one mile from that crater. I can't even see any broken windows anymore. Yet the dust cloud comes right around, goes oh. right above the village. Where's this morning light coming from? God, it's, it's like a cordon. As if all the radioactive dust has been sucked from here to form a barrier, separating us from the outside world. Well, how could that happen? But it couldn't happen naturally. Have you felt what it's like when you touch them? When you touch anything here, but take your glove off and feel the leaves on this bush. Go on. Well, just a second. Go and touch it. You feel? Oh, yes. It's, uh... It's like static electricity. And look at the hairs on your wrist, standing yeah. right up. Everything here, animal, vegetable, mineral, gives off the same charge. Which means? With every atom of every object on this planet, there's a certain electrical charge, but not racked that high. So, what planet are we talking about? I'm a scientist. I don't jump to those conclusions, unless seriously pushed. Oh, come on. Sounds like they're having a party down here. Looks like a village fete. Just the thing you'd be in the mood for after a meteor landing in your back garden. Look! That banner between the trees. Look out! Get back! Are you okay? I wasn't expecting the local bus to be running. It looks like it's heading for the far end of the street. There, where it peters out into a dust cloud. Are they crazy? Oh. What was that? It just... It hit the edge of the cloud and evaporated. Evaporated? That's the scientific term? Yeah, it's the best I can come up with. And not a soul over at that fate took a blind bit of notice. That's not the only thing they're turning a blind eye to. Check that banner over there. Inchbray Highland Games. 1978? And that bus. It and its passengers look like what you'd have seen rattling through here 50 years ago. Which means? It's like layers. Different layers of Inchbray's past all jumbled up together. I'm sure you're making perfect sense, but I don't really follow. I once worked on a student dig on a Greek island, and you'd trowel your way down, and fragments from different periods would get a little jumbled. Minoan pottery with high Athenian, Roman coins with the tops of old Coke bottles. We put a cordon round the site to keep the tourists out. So what? You think someone... Well, something has got its trowel out here. I, I think we ought to catch up with Jill. Well, I'm with you there. Mm. OK. Now, she talked us through the village on the map. Yeah. If this is the square, then her ex-husband's house is back this way. It was on that perimeter road, wasn't it? Overlooking the... Oh! Oh! Captain! Oh! Holy up to over there! 
A rig is sucked in style and grab. Oh, I don't understand. That racket! Oh! Oh, can't you hear it? What? You mean the bagpipes? No, I don't mean the bloody bagpipes. It's, it's coming from... No, 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 not from over there. From, from all around. Oh, can't you hear it? No! Listen! Guns! Explosions! Tanks! Men! Men screaming, burning! I can, can't you hear? Oh, the smell! The taste! Sun! Sun in my mouth! David! What's happening here? Oh, oh, oh. What is it? Stopped. What stopped? I... I something hooked it and ripped it out of my skull. They were looking at you. Who? All those people in that park across the street. They all turned and stared at you. We have to find Jill. Now! Yeah, come on, Mum, just out here. Barbecue's almost ready, girls. Barbecue? Well, this is a special day. Our sweet wee girl's poised to become one of those nasty, stroppy teenagers. <laughs> what? My 13th birthday, Mum. 13? But you... You're 15. You're 16 in July. 16 in July. 13 today. But that doesn't make sense. Why can't I have as many 13th birthdays as I like? If it makes us all happy, brings us all together as a family. Wait, that, that's right. We did have a barbecue on your 13th birthday, but that was, that was two and a half years ago. The last birthday party we had for you before we divorced. Then if I'm 13 today, guess what? You guys can't be divorced. Welcome home, sweetheart. Wait, my friends, what have you done with them? They are not invited. You okay? Yes, yes. Now come on, back end of the village must be just over here. Here comes that old bus again. Heading in the same direction as it went five minutes ago. Hold on, that man sat just behind the driver. Huh? I know him. And not from Inch Bray. Oh. Stop! Stop! Watch out! What are you doing? Stopping the bloody bus. What does it look like? You carry on. Find Jill. But wait a minute. It's all right. If the fellow on this bus is who I think he is, then I have a clue as to what's going on here. And it's nothing I can't handle. Go on. Get Jill. OK? Open this door. Right, driver. The bus sits here until I tell you different. Bus has got a schedule, sir. Well, just wait a minute and my friend here will get off with me. I knew it was you. You're holding up the bus, Davy, old mate. Come with me and it can get in its way. Turn that engine off. Stop! He told you, David. He's got a schedule. And I know where he's scheduled to go. What's the joke with this bus's vanishing act? He's done with mirrors? Something a little more high-tech. Stay on just round this corner and we'll find out. No, neither of us is staying on. I told you to stop this bus. And I told you, sir, this bus is places to be. Your face. Rings a bell, does it, sir? You're looking a little pale there, David. His face. I know you too, don't I? It's amazing the old friends you can bump into in a bus, isn't it? I'm getting off here. Open this door, now. Just wait till the next stop, David. It's just at the far end of the road here. I know where it's going. That damn cloud. I've seen what happens. There may be a few more old friends waiting for you in there. Oh, oh, damn it, damn it. It is with soldiers oh. getting posted to dangerous places at a moment's notice. What have you done to him? Oh, no need to worry. He's among friends, old friends. Uh, maybe you've some old friends we could reunite you with. No way. Why don't you stroll across to the Inchbray Games here? You'll find we know how to make a visitor welcome. I can imagine. No, Constable McBain or whoever, whatever you are, I'm going after the one friend you've left me here. Jill? Mm. 
She's got family matters to attend to. What have you done with her? Made her welcome. We told you, Inchbray looks after its own. And what about me? Oh, I'm not sure you're Inchbray's kind of person at all. Me neither. Which is why I'm finding a route out of here as fast as I can. For me and Jill. A route out of here, Dr. Granger. Oh, I can provide you with plenty of those. Isn't the cloud? Yes. This is a hotter cloud still. Remember? It's. It's the desert. Iraq! But that. This, this was years ago. Well, that's the trouble with years, isn't it? They have a way of catching up with a man. The passengers? They. Dead. Dead a while now. Dead since you turned your back on them. Even our poor driver here. The bus! It's going to crash! Now it is time for us to get off. I can't! I can't go out there! Too many bad memories? Yes. Hard luck. That's what it says on your ticket. Out there? They have missiles! This is suicide! Oh, scared of dying, Davy. Well, come with your old mate. I'll talk you through it. In Ghost Zone by Marty Ross. Jill Logan was played by Gay Ann Potter. Dr. Beth Granger by Joanna Tope. Captain Cairns, Sandy Nielsen. Dan Collins, Simon Tate. Heather Logan, Leslie Hart. PC McBain, Finley McLean. And Captain Hopridge by Stevie Hannon. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The director was Bruce Young. <laughs>